Good evening and welcome to Inspire, the show that takes a look at arts and culture across the North East. I'm Anna and I'll be your host throughout the show. Our lineup tonight focuses on film and theatre in the North East. And firstly, we went to check out the live theatre in Newcastle where they're rehearsing one of their headlining shows, Flying Into Daylight. Hi, I'm Jim Byrne, I'm the Chief Exec here at Live Theatre. Uh, I've been with Live for about 14 years and uh, Live Theatre is one of the six new writing producing companies in Britain. So we're pretty unique in the infrastructure, in the cultural infrastructure in the north of England. And what we do is we nurture artists, we work with playwrights, um, we produce plays, we have a big education and learning programme. And um, uh, Flying Into Daylight that you're talking to uh, my colleagues about today is, is our next production. They've just taken another production out of London, uh, literally just at the weekend. My name's Ron Hutchinson. I'm the writer of the play and I'm co-directing it with Max Roberts. I have always written about language and it's not surprising because I grew up in Northern Ireland, a Protestant, where actually if you have the wrong accent or use the wrong word you can be in trouble. Then uh, I moved to Coventry and I had my nose broken for speaking in an Irish accent the very first day I got there by one of the neighbour's kids. Then I moved to Los Angeles and I had to learn to speak and think in American. And I've always written plays about my journey into language. And I came across this story through Victoria Fisher, an actress in one of my plays. And she said she had this bolt of lightning that told her she had to go to Buenos Aires to learn the tango. And I discovered lots of people do that. And as I started looking at tango, I realized here's another language, a language of the body, a language of the feet. When you dance tango in this style of tango, which isn't showbiz tango, which is social tango, you actually are having a conversation every night and it's an improvised conversation with another body that you may not have met. Um, and certainly you haven't pre-planned any of these steps. And that seemed to me like a way to extend my exploration of language, a physical language which would actually be very powerful on the stage. Hello, my name's Summer Strallen and I am playing Virginia in Flying Into Daylight at the Live Theatre. Virginia is a uh, girl from Buckinghamshire. She's thrust into the world of tango by someone, a colleague, um, who says, "Come to a milonga, which are these sort of tango meets, um, which are all over the world, you know, all over the country, all over the world," and um, just becomes completely 100% obsessed. Um, and um, I mean, she's she works in an auction house in London, so. Um, you know, she's, she loves art and sort of sees the art in tango and uh, finds herself in, in very sort of uncomfortable slash dangerous slash amazing places um, in her life and um, discovers a lot about herself. I am Joss Van Tyler and I play a variety of parts in the play. I play Marco, uh, who is the tango teacher in Argentina. I play Phil, who is the boyfriend in uh, London. Dash Buckinghamshire. I play a kind of a variety of all the types of men that you meet in Virginia's life and Virginia's story in the play. The storyline kind of covers, I think, something that will resonate with everybody, which is you find a passion and when everybody says don't, you do. And how it kind of changes your life and how everything can change in a minute. And one coincidental kind of meeting with a guy in a lift changes her life and the play goes to areas that you wouldn't expect it to go to and it shows the, the light and the dark the romance and the sadness of kind of life and the way that the dance is portrayed um, to the public and also what it is behind closed doors all around the world and it's a kind of phenomenon that's always been there but 
it's kind of an underground and not many people know about it and then somebody gets involved in that and it's about the decision to lead the life that everybody would expect them to lead that we all think is kind of the right way to do it and then lead the life that she feels a calling to. It's kind of about inspiration I think and that thing of being called towards something and, and following it through against all odds. So it's quite life affirming I think. My name is Max Roberts. I've been the Artistic Director of Life Theatre since 1985 and before that I was one of its founding members. So uh, I've been connected to the theatre company uh, for many, many years. Uh, as you may be aware, uh, Life Theatre has been in existence for over 40 years. In fact, it was our 40th anniversary last year. And we have created many new plays. By and large, they have been connected to this region because this region, its rather distinctive identity and cultural, political, social history and indeed the issues and concerns that affect its people here and now have been the stimulus for the work. And to that effect we've been able to make contact with some fantastic writers who have an association with this, with this region. Over the years I've been privileged to work with writers from C.P. Taylor to Alan Plater to Tom Hadaway, to Michael Chaplin, Sheila Stevenson, Lee Hall, uh, who have had something to say about this region and have delighted to come back and reach the audiences that, uh, you know, the same audience from where, they, from where they come from. And that has created an incredible body of work, quite a unique body of work. And the interesting thing is that often those plays have spoken universally to audiences all over the country, in London, and indeed internationally. Probably our most famous play, The Pitman Painters by Lee Hall, you know, was a, started off as a story based on a, 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 lo, a long forgotten piece of social history from the 1930s in Northumberland. Uh, and yet Lee was able to make that play into a story that touched the hearts and minds of a contemporary audience, even though it had that 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 setting in the 1930s and was very much connected to that particular part of the world. But the stories that he writes, indeed the stories that all our writers concern themselves with, are universal stories. I mean we all love American plays for example by Arthur Miller and even though they're set in small town America they still touch our hearts and minds and I'm proud to say that a lot of the plays that we've created that have touched the hearts and minds of people not only here in the North East but uh, nationally and internationally. Staying in Newcastle's theatres, our next feature takes a look at a company that's based in Yorkshire but who have brought their work to the North East and with them a pool of opportunities for Northern talent. Opera North are currently touring the UK with their trio of operas, the most widely popular of which is La Traviata. We spoke to them at the Theatre Royal. <laughs> I'm Richard Mantle, I'm the General Director of Opera North, which was founded in 1978 as a subsidiary of English National Opera, which is based in London and is still there, and it was the plan at the time to create the first uh, regional company, opera company, uh, in England, uh, and that happened to be English National Opera North, based in Leeds. Um, within two years, the company had declared independence from ENO, and it became uh, opera North and it's been performing opera all over the North from Leeds um, for all those years. So we perform year-round uh, opera uh, as well as all sorts of other uh, activities. Um, we're not just a, an opera company, our orchestra is a concert orchestra in its own right and we perform uh, actually here across the river at the, at the Sage uh, as well um, and we make recordings and we perform in concert halls again all over the north and there's a very extensive education program largely centred in, in Yorkshire because that's where we are but we're hoping to extend that further and probably into this into this region as well. I'm Dominic Barberi from Hartlepool and I'm singing here in the chorus with Opera North. Um, I first started singing in school when they had some school shows and got drawn into that. 
So with singing and acting in Return to the Forbidden Planet was the first one. I think the view of opera has changed massively in recent years. People no longer see it as having to dress up in three-piece suits and go along to the theatre. I mean, I've turned up to the theatre wearing what I'm wearing now. And it's become much more accessible, not only financially, but also visually. And you always have the subtitles up on the stage so you know what's being said, even if it's in a foreign language. Each of the shows has about six weeks of production and rehearsal time. So we start off musically and running through things, and then we transfer that to the stage. And obviously you try things out in the rehearsal room, they put it on stage. We have about a week of zitz probes and stage and pianos, then stage and orchestras, and then the curtain's up and we start. I think it's really important to take opera into towns that you wouldn't normally associate with opera. Everyone thinks London for opera. That's from what people believe. So bringing it to towns like Newcastle and then Nottingham, it really it lifts the profile and allows local people to see it where it's simply not feasible if it was only on further down south. I think Opera North plays a very important part of both this region, uh, partly because of our historic relationship, um, but also right across the north. We are the Arts Council's largest arts company in England outside of London and we're the only company in England, opera company in England, to be based outside the capital. I think when we come we bring something that doesn't appear here at any other time. Nobody else does that and I think we hopefully we do enrich the life of the region. I think both through the work we do here in the theatre um, but also increasingly the work we've been doing in the Sage. In, uh, in later in the year we're going to perform across the river um, Wagner's The Flying Dutchman. It's a fantastic piece. It'll be wonderful in that theatre. Um, hopefully we'll all uh, be enjoying that.